Good afternoon and welcome to the Drophus Deminar series. My name is Chris Rizal and I'm joined by my colleague Jasper. Good afternoon, everyone. So what is a Deminar? Uh, well, for us, this Deminar series is aimed at our newer users uh, and is focused on exploring a specific workflow or part of our software that includes the key picks and clicks. Uh, and as I've mentioned in the past, the topics are based on what you, our customers, have told us that you're interested in seeing via your survey feedback. So it's a little bit different to our webinars that are more general information or customer presentations. And we have a growing number of webinars and deminars on our YouTube channel, which I'd urge you to take a look at. Uh, in terms of the demonar format, they're generally a little bit of theory or explanation of concepts at the start. And then we take a, a deep dive into the specifics. We try to keep them to between 15 and 20 minutes so that you can join the live session without it interrupting your day too much. Uh, and they are also recorded so you can watch them on your journey to and from work or in your lunch hour, etc. So please feel free to pass the details on to your colleagues. Uh, in this session, we'll be looking at validation. And there's actually several different types of validation that we'll be exploring. So Jasper, can you tell us a bit more about these and the learning objectives for today? Thanks, Chris. Uh, in today's session, we will be covering what is validation, the importance of validation, and who in a project team can perform validation. We will also be demonstrating three types of validations. The first being validating the brief area and the design area. The second is checking the room content and quantity between design and brief. Lastly, validating design provision meets the requirements using room data fields and items data field. Within the context of Dorofus, validation is confirming the accuracy of project information between the brief and the design. You can perform validation between Drophus database and Archicad, Revit, or IFC mod format models, or within the database itself. A single reason for data validation is to ensure design meets the brief. There are different scenarios on a project where, where it is important to do these validations. Firstly, it is to ensure that the client requirements are met. Through different project stages, the information and data is constantly evolving. Briefing information can also change during the course of design. Hence, it is important to be able to check and track what the brief have asked for and if the design is meeting the brief. Different deliverables should also be aligned showing the same information. Lastly, Keeping to project budget is an important aspect for many projects, and deviations from brief can affect the cost of projects. On any project, there are many stakeholders creating and developing information. Validation takes place within the database or with a geometric model. Stakeholders that work in both database and geometric models can validate between the two systems to ensure the design meets the brief requirements. Stakeholders who does not work with 3D models can also view the information and perform validation within the database. We will be doing three demonstrations today. The first, is a room-based validation where we will look at different ways we can compare briefed area and designed areas. The second is confirming quantities of item in rooms between brief and design. We will demonstrate this using the Revit add-on. We will also demonstrate how Drophus Web can help with validation using IFC models. The third is to demonstrate how to use room data and item data fields for validations. And our example is to verify if there are sufficient GPOs or power sockets in a room. To carry out the room-based validation, your room should be linked and the room area in the model synchronized with Drophus design area attribute. You can use the Drophus panel in either Archicad or Revit to make this check. When you select a room, 
if the Drophus panel shows the detail of the room, then the Drophus room is connected. Otherwise, you'll be prompted to link the Revit room to Drophus. Area validation is identifying differences between brief areas and design areas. You can perform validation through these means. Within the Drophus client, with an Excel export, or visualize the data with your design information. With the desktop client, when both the program area and design areas are filled, the software calculates the difference between the two and also provides a percentage difference. You can filter the values at the column header to view a subset of the rooms based on the filter criteria. We will demonstrate how to set up a safe search so you can get to the required rooms quickly. With safe search, you can define multiple conditions to filter the data you need. We will now set up a safe search to look for area variances larger than 5% and less than 5%. Save the search before running it and give the search name uh, for an easy reference to reuse it. Make it descriptive so your team can understand what this search uh, is doing. You can also use the save search as your project evolves to keep track of the area differences. The advanced search functionality allows you to set up a targeted filtering condition. In this example, we are filtering for area variances between plus minus 5% and plus minus 10%. Applying this safe search will show room with area differences within the defined range. Another method to validate areas is by exporting to an Excel report. In this demonstration, we are exporting the schedule of accommodation for level seven of this building. The report is using a pre-formatted template that has conditional formatting applied to the variance percentage column. It will color the cells yellow if values are between five to 10% or minus five to minus 10%. For any values exceeding 10% or minus 10%, the cells will have a red background. The percentage area variance can be visualized in Revit, giving the data the context of the design. The design minus program area percent, uh, design minus program percentage area needs to be synced to Revit rooms. In Revit, set up a color scheme called area heat map with colors defined by the range values. Apply the area heat map color scheme to the view and the area variances are visualized in the model showing the magnitude of area difference. The second validation is to check the quantities of FFNE or MEP equipment with the required quantities. The Drophus database can contain every element required to go into a room. These include non-model elements. For this demonstration, we are comparing model elements in Revit with the quantities in Drophus database. Revit family will need to be connected with the database. If the family is connected with the database, the Drophus panel will display the item properties. Otherwise, it will request to link to the database. Alternatively, when you run the items in room function, items or families that are not linked are noted in the dialog box. We will now look at how to validate using the items in room function in the Revit add-on. 
The first thing to do is to establish links between the unlinked Revit families and Dorofus items. This is done by selecting the content from unlinked Dorofus side and the unlinked Revit content and using the bi-directional arrow to link the two. When all the contents are linked, differences are identified under the model element quantities in red. The project stakeholder can adjust the number of families in the model or use the DrawFirst function to update quantities in DrawFirst. We have demonstrated validating a single room. The function can also be used across an entire level or an entire building. Here we are demonstrating validation across level seven of this building. The results can be exported easily to Excel and filter to show the unmatched quantities. You can also perform validation using Dorofus Web and IFC model files. You will need to upload IFC model to the IFC Web Viewer. As you navigate through the building, the IFC model views highlight the selected elements. Browsing to premium bed one and to the items within the room, you will see the match column showing the status of item matching between the database and the IFC format models. Green indicates it found a match and red cross indicates no match. Yellow exclamation marks indicates there are different in quantities. We will update the quantity of the chair and refresh the page. The match indicator for the chair item now shows as a green tick, indicating the quantities in the model and the database are the same. The third validation is using a set of user-defined rules to validate the correlation between the room and item specification. You can find the button for this function in the room module. The rules uses room and item data values to validate if the room requirements are met by the item in the room. Checks can be carried out for numerical values, tick boxes indicating true false to find over specified or under specified differences. The QR code is a link to our wiki page detailing this function. There are some prerequisites before you can use this test. First is to identify the checks that you want to carry out. The checks can be carried out using numerical values or true false values. And check if you have these fields and if they can be used uh, for the test, or you, you may need to add additional fields as required. To set the scene, we have a building where every room will have a number of GPUs or power sockets. And for the demonstration, we will check if there are sufficient GPUs in a room based on the number of items requiring GPUs. The first step is to have the necessary fields in the room data that identifies the number of GPUs required in the room. We will be using the field normal supply total outlets. Next is to have the necessary fields in the item data that can quantify the number of power sockets required. We have created a tick box field to identify if the equipment requires power, hence a GPO. We are assuming that every item requiring power needs its own GPO. These are the steps to set up a new rule. After opening the room, data item checks dialog box, create a new rule, 
select the room data and item specification fields for comparison, and lastly, set the priority. We will now demonstrate how this can be used on a project. A user working in Revit wants to find out if the number of GPOs is sufficient for the number of electrical equipment in the treatment room. Using the Revit plugin, we can open the treatment room and view the data in the office. The room has eight GPOs required. Within the FFNE item list, there are some electrical items that has a requirement for power, hence GPOs. We will open the room data item checks dialog box and select the test we want to run. We will select either to check for over specified or under specified. In this example, we want to see if there's an over provision of GPOs. The test will run for all the rooms and browsing the results for treatment room ensures there could be an over provision of GPOs. We will now explain the two tests. If you run the over specified test, it will identify the room where the quantity in the room data is more than the quantity identified through the item data. This may be due to insufficient items in the room or incorrect data in the items or a case of providing too many GPOs in, in the room. For the under specified test, the results will show the quantity in the room data is less than the quantity identified through the item data. This indicates more GPOs may be required in these rooms. In both test scenarios, the results may lead to additional coordination within the project team. The GPO versus equipment requiring power example is one of many we can show for the room data item data check. Others would include wells rating for toilets and acoustic levels for compliance. In terms of rooms and item-based validations, here are a list of other examples of validations you can carry out on your project. We have come to the end of this demonstration. I hope you have found the session useful. I will leave you with this quote from a customer uh, Robert Gordon from HOK. Scan the QR code to get a soundbite from him. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Jasper. That was great. Uh, and I'm sure that even our experienced users learned something new. Um, so we focused on what we call design validation, i.e. where you compare the, the client's brief up against your design. But these validation methods can be applied to other situations too. For example, if you're at the end of the design stage and the data that you have in Drophus has developed from the original brief, your design data can now be compared to the construction data. Um, Jasper, just in case anybody joined late or they want to share this with their colleagues, how can they find the recording? Recording of this session will be posted onto the Drophus YouTube channel. All the demo uh, videos are collated into a playlist. And when the video is and when this session is available, we will send an email notification. Perfect. Um, so our next session will be in June, uh, where we'll be looking at working with IFC models. So that's that's definitely going to be a good one. Um, invitations will be going out shortly. And if you have any feedback on the Deminar series, please reach out to Jasper. His his email is at the bottom of the slide there. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.